Hey, what's going on YouTube? My name is Papa Oxy, and I wanted to make a video because I felt like I had a hard time learning about extreme reactors in the new All the Mods 9 mod pack. I'm sure the tutorial can be used in other mod packs, but I'm also only doing this in All the Mods 9. Also, I apologize for my voice. I'm a bit sick at the moment, so you'll have to bear with me. So let me place down Doug here and let's get started. Hi, Doug. <laughs> so some starter information i started on the wrong side of my little exhibit here before we begin if you want to learn more about this mod pack i highly recommend you reading the extreme book from extreme reactors it's kind of just a a guide to everything in the mod um i'm not a big reader so i only read this for really basic information and from my limited understanding it doesn't have a whole lot out there like sure it'll get you through the mod pack but it's a lot faster to just watch someone do it, in my opinion. So, uh, in previous additions to Extreme Reactors, uh, from what I remember, I used to play this a long time ago. You used to use Yellowrite or Yellowrite to feed reactors for their energy. Um, it's still in the game, but it's not naturally spawning in all the mods 9, as far as I know. So its replacement is just uranium, which you can use in the reactor either as... Oh, come on, man. So yeah, like I was saying, you don't use yellowrite anymore, you use uranium. The yellowrite is no longer needed for the fuel in the reactors. It's not even naturally spawning in all the mods 9, as far as I know. So its replacement is uranium, which you can find all over the place. It usually spawns pretty deep in caves, so... Most of the time you're going to find the deep slate version, but you can find the regular and then you can also find the nether one inside the nether. So this right here is our 3x3 reactor. So in the middle we have our reactor controller. Um, you open this up, this is the interface for it. And on the left here I have the basic access port. And this is where we're going to be importing our fuel. Um, over here we have another access port which we will be using to export the cyanite that's made through the process of the reactor when it's running. On the back side, we have a energy tab feeding into a energy cube. And one thing I would like to point out about the access tabs is you have an active one, and then you also have a passive one. 98% of the time, you're probably gonna be using this active tab because it will automatically push out the energy on its own. Whereas the passive tab, I think just uses redstone signals to do that. I'm not 100% sure. I really haven't played around with it. So if you'd like to mess around with that, you can. But like I said, you'll be using this one mostly. Next thing I'd like to cover is the access ports. You have two of them essentially. They're the same block, but there's two different functions for them. Right now you can see it's got red arrows. This means it's pointing inwards. So whatever you put in there is gonna be injected into the reactor. You can change this using a wrench from the mod, which I think you just right click on it. So now it changed the arrow to green, which means it's exporting its goods. Otherwise, if you don't have a wrench, you could also go inside the GUI and just press inlet mode and it will switch it back or you can go back to outlet mode. And we'll leave it on outlet mode because we're gonna turn this on and it will start making waste. So next thing we need to cover is putting fuel in here. All you do, you take uranium, you just shift click in there or you can drop it in there and it will start filling up the fuel rods in the middle. You can't see them because it's a three by three. Uh, next, you're gonna come over here and you're just gonna click on and you'll see that it is raising up the heat and making energy. Granted, it's very low energy because this is one of the basic reactors that you can make. So, it's not that great. Now, one thing I'd like to point out as well, I don't think these reactors will blow up if you mess it up. Uh, for one, they won't even turn on if you don't build them properly, and I don't really think they blow up anymore. I know they used to, so I wouldn't worry about them blowing up now. Next is the bigger tier of reactors. This is a five x five, which is the largest size you can go for a basic casing on the reactors. It's basically the same thing as this, just a lot bigger and it actually produces a lot more energy. So as you can see, we have the same setup here. Nothing new, except on the back side, I actually added in these charging ports and a redstone port over here. We have our redstone access port. 
I like I said I really haven't played around with this a whole lot I assume this is where you're gonna be using all of the signals for passive things I don't know nothing about this so I'm not even gonna go into it right here though the reactor forge energy charging port quite the name this here is where you're gonna be charging any equipment that you have that requires energy so all you do let's say you have a jetpack you click on it all you have to do is shift click in there and you'll see it start charging it up to take it out, you have to press this manual ejection and it will pop it over here into the right and then that's where you can grab it and put it on your body. Uh, I don't know how jetpacks work, so we're not gonna go into that. This reactor only has one control rod in the middle and has water surrounding it, which is a valid coolant for the reactor. Uh, granted, it's not that great. If you could use anything, I definitely wouldn't use water, but I wanted to give it to you as an example. Um, as you can see, the casing heat is very low with the core heat being very high. You typically want these to be the opposite, so the casing heat should be higher and the core heat should be lower, giving you more RF per tick. Okay, so over here is the next example I have for you guys. This is still a basic reactor, but it's using the blocks instead of water. Uh, I just put a bunch of random type of metal in here just to show you that it can work with all types of different metals there's some where it doesn't actually work inside and it will tell you when you right click on here that it's not capable of using that um, also another thing i'd like to point out if you use copper you have to use regular copper this was <laughs> normal copper but it actually got weathered um, you can't use waxed block of copper in there so it's honestly not worth using copper. Not only that, copper is a pretty bad um, coolant for the reactors, so I definitely wouldn't use it. Down here, this is the probably the optimal way that you want to set up your control rods. It's a checkerboard pattern, and then you just put your coolants in between. This is one of the best ways to get the most amount of fuel in your reactor and also cool them down the most. So this here is a reinforced reactor. Uh, I made it a lot bigger to showcase that reinforced reactors can go up to any size, I think. I'm sure there's a limit to it, but they can get pretty big. I wouldn't recommend doing them that big unless you're super rich. In my personal opinion, I don't need this much power, so I probably won't be doing this. Uh, but uh, as you can see in here, uh, we're making about 41,000 FE per tick, which is a lot. To compare, this one over here, I think, makes only about 8,000. Yeah, makes almost 9,000 FE per tick. But this is a basic model, and this is a reinforced model. Um, the casing heat's super high, and the core heat's super high as well. Uh, which I guess is a good thing, except when your core heat is higher, your fuel usage goes up. Whereas your casing heat is higher, the energy output and the coolant conversion is better. Now, as far as blocks for coolants go i did some testing with numerous blocks the best things i've found so far are right here in front of you so diamond and endirium are probably the better blocks that you can use right now for cooling uh, as you can see the core heats are very low um no, lower than average i would say and then the case heats are about the same uh, it's not great but it's definitely better than some other things like the copper like the iron and the signalium. I'd like to point out that I did my testing in a five by five basic reactor. So the variables can change depending on how big your reactor is. Also, if you use a reinforced reactor. So with diamond and endirium, uh, these are probably the best blocks that you'll be able to use in your reactors. I'm not 100% sure. I did a lot of testing with various other stuff, but I couldn't really find anything that was better than these two or that even worked, for example. Um, so the core heats are pretty low, and then the case heats are, you know, they're about middle of the run, which is good, that's what you want. The FE per ticks, both about 9,000. I would say these ores are fairly similar in price. The Enderium probably be more expensive just because platinum's a bit harder to find. And then over here, we have the iron and we have signalium. Now, both of these are very inexpensive and honestly i think these are like great if you're trying to be cheap with your build because the fp per tick output is not that far behind diamond and endirium uh, i would say about 600 700 less so really not that bad 
Um, iron is super cheap to make and it's pulling in some great numbers for what it is. But yeah, I mean, if you're looking for something cheap and you just want to get some power going, I highly recommend just using iron. Even Signalium's a good one. These are probably the best two out of the lower end ores that you can use. So if you want to use them, go ahead. Okay, so for the next example, I'm just going to show you how to build a, uh, a reactor. We're going to build a reinforced reactor. So here I'm describing all of like the essential parts that you really need to get going on one of these. So we have the casing, the glass, the reactor controller, the active energy tower power tap, and the solid access port, reactor control rod, and the reactor fuel rod. Those are the main parts that you need. A uh, quick note, you don't need to use reactor glass. You don't have to use it at all. I'm not even sure if it really has any benefit to it other than looking kind of cool when you set it up. So we're just going to build a 5x5. Five five. Okay, the base is done. Then we're going to build five blocks up on each side of the corners. Okay, then the next part would be to add your controller. I would go around to each corner and add in your access ports. Uh, another note too is you can put access ports in the same side together. I like just having them on the other sides so I know which one's which. We'll fill in some glass here and then we can put our power tap on the back. Oh, my bad. Okay, the bottom section is done. So we're going to come down or come up to the top part and we are going to place our fuel rods. We're going to do the checkerboard pattern like I said. Uh, next, we'll add our coolants in. So we're just going to be using diamond blocks. And then we will put in our control rods on top of the fuel rods. And then we are going to put in the rest with glass. Now you see how the texture changed when I finished this? That means it's completed 100%. Uh, one thing I'd like to point out to you as well, if you have a block that's not supposed to belong in the reactor it won't finish and if you right click on this reactor it'll actually tell you what's wrong so all fuel rods must belong to a fuel assembly behind a control rod right okay so we know that's got to go we'll put the coolant back in there all right so there's our reinforced reactor made they're super simple to make uh the only thing is is the reinforced casings are pretty expensive so if you want to go ahead and rush it, there's no bottleneck really between the basic reactors and the reinforced reactors. What I mean by that is you don't need material made from the basic reactors to make material for the reinforced reactors. You can just make these right off the bat. Granted, they're a lot more expensive, but I definitely think it's worth the time. All right, that's the end of the tutorial. Uh, if you thought it was helpful, please let me know in the comments. I really like making this kind of stuff for people to watch. Um, I also really like helping people, so if it benefited you at all, if you learned anything, I would love to know. If there was anything that you wish you knew better, please also let me know. Um, this tutorial wasn't meant to be a super in-depth analysis of the mod. It was meant to just get you on your feet. So. If you guys would like to see something like where I would go really in depth to a mod, you can let me know. Otherwise, I will see you guys later. Bye.